In this video we're going to look at the major stages in the formation of life. So we started with organic molecules, we then formed membranes, then the first prokaryotic heterotrophs, then prokaryotic autotrophs, before eukaryotic cells, colonial organisms, and finally multicellular organisms. In the previous videos, we've looked at the first step in getting to life, and that was with the creation of organic molecules. So these are the amino acids, monosaccharides, nucleic acids, as well as the lipids that are the building blocks for all life. Uh, these were made, and there's a couple of theories on how they were made, and were all hanging around in very high concentrations in the prebiotic soup, so in the oceans of the early Earth. Now the first step to go from there to life is the formation of membranes. Now membranes are made of lipids, which have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. Uh, so therefore they form bubbles generally. Uh, and in these bubbles, there would be an aqueous solution that is trapped. And this internal environment provides protection for the chemical reactions that are occurring inside that bubble uh, and allows reactions to occur there that wouldn't be able to react if it was floating around in that prebiotic soup. And because of uh, the size of cells and things like that, uh, if these cells or early cells uh, would be able to, got too big, uh, they would split and replicate. The next step is moving from these membrane-bound chemical reactions to prokaryotic heterotrophs. Now, prokaryotic uh, means before the envelope, and the envelope is the uh, membranes that surround uh, the nucleus and the organelles. And these are the first things that were actually living. And we still have prokaryotic, prokaryotic uh, heterotrophs that are around now in the form of prokaryotic bacteria. Now these first prokaryotes would have been heterotrophs and they would have absorbed the organic molecules that are around, so absorbed uh, amino acids and uh, monosaccharides that were around in the soup rather than digesting them. So rather than breaking down uh, these or more complicated uh, organic molecules, they would have with these uh, initial simple organic molecules absorbed them directly. As those prokaryotic heterotrophs are absorbing all the free amino acids and other organic molecules that are found in the prebiotic soup, uh, it will create competition between all the different uh, pro prokaryotes. Uh, once the organic molecules would have become scarce, they would start looking for other forms of energy. And these other forms of energy could come from these prokaryotic heterotrophs eating each other or uh, evolution could occur that favours organisms which are able to harness energy from the sun and make their own energy or food. The oldest example we've got of this is cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae, uh, and we've found fossils of cyanobacteria that's three and a half billion years old. After prokaryotes, we then had eukaryotes form. Now eukaryotes means good envelope, and these are organisms that have membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. So fungi is an example of a eukaryote. Uh, they're much more complicated than prokaryotes, and we're not entirely sure how we went from uh, prokaryotes to eukaryotes, uh, but it's thought that what happened was that there was a symbiotic or an endosymbiotic relationship between different prokaryotes uh, and these ended up being inside each other. So for example, uh, both mitochondria and chloroplasts are membrane bound organelles that contain their own DNA. So it's thought that these, uh, both of these uh, were originally their own prokaryotic cell, which eventually came to live uh, inside another eukaryotic cell. So a cell that incorporated 
those uh, early prokaryotes into a more complicated life. The next step was organisms becoming colonial in that they live in colonies. Colonies are groups of cells living together and the important thing here is that there isn't any differentiation between cells. So all the cells are the same and doing the same job, they're just stuck together with each other which provides a benefit for the whole colony. And stromatolites, which are colonies of cyanobacteria, uh, some of the earliest evidence we have of colonial organisms. As the colonies get bigger and bigger, the cells within them uh, become more specialised. So they take on roles of their own and this makes them more efficient. So there might be one cell that's role is to protect the other cells on the outside. Uh, another cell that's role is to get uh, energy from the environment and deliver it to other cells. Uh, so they're becoming more and more efficient and more and more specialised. Eventually, uh, these specialised cells would form together into structures made of tissue, so cells coming together to form tissue, and these would uh, then turn into structures and form very early and simple organs. And then through the process of evolution, these multicellular organisms uh, would eventually make more and more complicated life forms. So this is the current theory on the movement from those early organic molecules into uh, life as we know it today. So the first step was the formation of those organic molecules, then having those organic molecules bound by a membrane, so inside a lipid bubble, then the formation of prokaryotic heterotrophs, so uh, single-celled organisms that eat the amino acids that were found floating around uh, that did not have membrane bound organelles or nuclei. Uh, then to prokaryotic autotrophs, which still do not have that membrane bound organelles or nuclei, but are able to harness the energy from the sun to produce food. Then eukaryotic cells, which we think is the prokaryotic cells joining together in a symbiosis and eventually becoming separate and more complicated cells or unicellular organisms. Uh, clonial organisms being these organisms living together in a colony for mutual benefit. Moving on to multicellular organism where these colonies become more and more specialised until they're no longer able to survive without the other cells. And this leads us to life as we know it and evolution from here was able to make more and more complicated multicellular organisms to the point that we're at today.